sing once again. Give me oil, Lord, give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Just give me oil in my lamp and keep me burning, burning, burning. Keep me burning to the break of day. And I will sing, Hosanna, sing. through him that we have victory this hour amen. amen praise the lord it's good to have each and every one of you here this afternoon or this morning and uh, welcome each and every one of you we have visitors here from florida we have visitors here from south carolina we have from different parts even lawrenceville georgia <laughs> amen so welcome each and every one of you amen to the house of the lord amen are you happy to be in the house of god amen, amen. amen. praise the lord jesus Amen. So, um, if, if um, los hermanos, I'm speaking Spanish for just a moment, los hermanos que necesitan audífonos, porque yo les voy a interpretar ahorita, levanten las manos, si necesitan audífono. Si no necesitan audífono, entonces estamos bien. Okay. Yes. I was just asking them if, you, if they need headphones, because I'll be interpreting for some of them in, into English, uh, into Spanish. So, brother, wait if you want to come. God bless you. You all have your seats for a second. Dios les bendiga. Pueden sentarse un momento. Good to have each and every one of you muy, here. Muy bueno tenerlo a cada uno de ustedes aquí. Uh, do we have pastors here? Tenemos pastores aquí. Brother Samuel. Brother Martin. Would you stand, please? Se pueden poner de pie, por favor. Okay. God bless you. Dios los bendiga. Thank you for coming. Muchas gracias por venir. All the way from Jacksonville. De, de Jacksonville. And? Y... And either uh, from Beaufort, South Beaufort, Carolina. South Carolina. So Amen. God bless you. Dios los bendiga. Make yourself at home. Hágase en la casa. We have a, wonderful, en la casa. have a wonderful speaker today. Tenemos un hermano que nos va, nos va a predicar. Brother Andrew Glover. El hermano Andrew Glover. From Virginia. De Virginia. Amen. Amen. So you just worship God. Entonces ustedes adoren a Dios. If you have a special. Si tienen un especial. We have some that are already going to sing. Tenemos unos que ya van a, van a cantar. Tienen but especiales. But we're here to worship God. Pero estamos aquí para adorar a Dios. Amen. We're not Amen. here to look at each other. No estamos aquí para mirarnos el uno al otro. We're here to look to God. Estamos aquí para mirar hacia Amen. Dios. Amen. We want Amen. you to have a good time in the Lord. Queremos que ustedes tengan un buen tiempo en el Señor. If you need anything. Si necesitan alguna cosa. See myself. Me pueden venir on, on the me. Our brother Luis. O, o aquí donde el hermano Luis. Our brother Bob. O el hermano Bob. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have a good service. Vamos a tener un buen servicio. Amen. And then after the service, we're going to have a meal. Y, y después del servicio, vamos a tener un tiempo de compañerismo. Amen. Vamos a tener, vamos a tener una comida. <laughs> And then after that, we'll have fellowship. So there's... Vamos a tener tiempo de Amen. Amen. So you just enjoy yourself. Entonces, Welcome to Spoken Word Church. Bienvenido a la Iglesia de la Palabra Hablada. Actually, today, y hoy, 
July the 4th, el 4 de julio, 1971, 1971, most of you were not even here. Muchos de ustedes ni estaban vivos en ese tiempo. I was. Yo sí. Yeah, Brother Samuel said he was. <laughs> but 1970, wait, one day old. Hey, hey one day. It was one year, one year old, he said. One year old? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Well, this church started Esta iglesia comenzó, se July the 4th, el 4 de julio, 1971. It was a little bitty church. Era una iglesia pequeñita. The wall was right there where this beam is. La pared estaba aquí donde está esta this parte wasn't de arriba. Here. Esto no estaba aquí. This was added later Esto on. Esto fue agregado más adelante. We only had maybe 15 people. Nosotros teníamos como 15 personas. With the altar here. El altar estaba aquí. And the seats here. Y los asientos estaban aquí en and este lado. And one door right there. Y una puerta aquí. That's right. Amen. Amen. We've come a long way from that. Hemos pasado ya bastante desde desde entonces. And one of the brothers brought it to my attention. Y uno de los hermanos me lo trajo a mi atención. This is the 49th year. Que este es el el año 49. Amen. Amen. We're headed into the jubilee Estamos year, brother Martin. Estamos ya entrando al año de jubileo. 50. Amen. According to the Bible. De acuerdo a la Biblia. Seven sevens is 49. Siete siete es eh, es 49. And the next year is the 50th y el jubilee. El próximo año es el es el es el el jubileo 50. So tomorrow. Entonces mañana. We'll be in our jubilee estaremos year. Estaremos en nuestro año jubileo. So no what's going to start it off? Entonces qué bueno para pues, comenzar así de esta manera y tenerlos ustedes aquí como nuestros. God nuestro. bless you and enjoy the service. Bueno, Dios les bendiga. Disfruten el servicio. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's, well, let's just sing. If the brothers in the back, if they could bring up that song, Greater Than All My Sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many know this song? If we don't know it, we'll learn it. Let's just worship the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greater than all my sins is the blood that still cleanses me. It's the grace that still sets me free to praise Him. I know. I cannot fall, for it's greater than all the blood of the Lamb. Once again, sing it unto him now. Worship him. Oh, greater than all my sins is the blood that still cleanses me. It's the grace that still sets me free. To praise Him, I know the blood's applied. I'm walking in newness of life. I cannot fall, for it's greater than all the blood of the Lamb. Let's sing it unto Him one more time now. Hallelujah. Oh, greater than all my sins is the blood that still cleanses me. It's the grace that still sets me free to praise Him. I know. I cannot fall, for it's greater than all the blood of the Lamb. Oh, can we just sing it unto him one more time now? Worship him. I know the grail my sins is the blood that still cleanses me. It's the grace that still sets me free. To praise Him, I know the blood's applied. 
I'm walking in newness of life. I cannot fall, for it's greater than all the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the blood that still cleanses us in this hour? Amen. Amen. Let's sing that song, My God is Awesome. <clears throat> the brothers can bring that up. My God is Awesome. <clears throat> How many know that song? My God is Awesome. <clears throat> My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened, forever He will reign. My God is awesome, He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. Oh, my God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Yes, he's awesome. Our God is awesome. My God is awesome. Oh, yes, he's awesome. Awesome, oh, awesome, awesome, my God is awesome, Savior of the hopeless, giver of salvation, by His stripes I'm healed, oh, my God is awesome, today I'm fine for his in grace I'm living, praise his holy name. My God is awesome, my God is awesome, oh awesome, yes he's awesome, awesome, my God is awesome, oh awesome. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Yeah. Is he awesome in your life? Amen. 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 I don't know of a better decision that I've ever made than to serve the Lord with all of my heart. Amen. It's the best decision that I've ever made. Praise the Lord. And, Lord. and so I hope that today, if you need to make that decision today, I hope today, today is the day that you can Amen. make it. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So um, I believe we have some specials. Brother Martin, did you say you're... Your family has a special, so we're going to have our guests sing first. And so if the Brother Martin and his family could come. Yes. 
Amen. Let's just give the Lord a clap of praise. Thank you. 
Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. I want to know him more. And do you want to know him more? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, I know that, brother, I think Brother Ismail's group from Jacksonville, they, they're going to sing tomorrow. I think so. Um, yeah, so we're going to have our group from our church come now. And... Uh, And you know who you are. Another clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise, the Lord. praise God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if there's a, again, I, I mentioned some new ones come in. Si alguien aquí necesita audífonos para que le interpretación, levanten sus manos y los hermanos de allá pueden darle audífonos. Amen. Para para la prédica. Praise the Lord. You love the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, we're going to have, uh, Brother Bob, you want to come take up our offering, or who's, who's going to come take up our offering this time? <clears throat> God, for the privilege to hear your word, and we just... 
come expecting you, God. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll bless the little bit of offering that's given back, Lord, that, that we put here in the offering place. <clears throat> bless the remainder of this service, Lord Jesus. We just put everything into your hands. We ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, as Brother Bob passes that around, does anybody else have a special that I didn't know anything about that you just want to sing so bad? Burning in your heart. Okay. If you do, you just raise your hand. Amen. Let's, as he passes that, let's just sing, uh, uh, take up your cross, key of F, key of F. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. praise brother wade after this song we'll just go ahead and have have brother andrew come out you guys want to sing it's been requested they do a violin <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do tomorrow. <laughs> they were not. They were not prepared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> if the brothers in the back, if they could bring up this song, every praise is to our God. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Let's do, uh, I know we have key of C here, but let's do key of E flat. E flat. <clears throat> Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing it again, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Let's clap our hands now. Worship Him. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise. Every praise is to our God, God my Savior. 
With one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior, oh God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes He is, yes He is, God my Savior. to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God, sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God, every praise, every praise is to our God, God my Savior, oh God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes He is, yes He is, God my Savior. of praise. Is he your Savior, Amen. your Deliverer? Amen. He's almighty. Amen. He's wonderful. He's powerful. Amen. The mighty Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And we can have Brother Andrew, if he's prepared to come out, let's just sing that again as Brother Andrew comes. Every praise is to our God. <clears throat> every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God, sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God, my Savior. to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, 
Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my Deliverer, God, my Deliverer, yes, He is, yes, He is, God, my Savior. Yes, he is God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. Can you give him a hand clap of praise this morning? Amen. Is he your Savior? Is he your healer? Is he your deliverer? Amen. I think this morning we can testify that he is our everything. Amen. Amen. We have come to the realization that if our job, somehow or another, we could make it. Amen. If we lost our car, somehow or another, we could make it. But if we lost Jesus, we've lost everything. Amen. So this morning we are grateful. We are, we are grateful to be identified this morning. Uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You love the Lord today. Amen. I tell you, it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you and to be able to speak to you this morning. And just before we look in the word, can we just bow our hearts together uh, towards the Lord? And uh, we've sung the songs of Zion and we believe there is a, an atmosphere that has been created here this morning that the word uh, can come forth in. And let's just ask him to come and speak to us. Heavenly Father, Lord, as your believing children have gathered themselves together here this morning, Father, we are aware that there are, Lord, many needs among your body in this hour and the time that we're living in. Lord, we know that we're living in a time where it's a shaking time, it's a confusing time. Lord, it's a time when people don't know which way to turn, they don't know which direction to look to. But Father, we stand here this morning under the auspices of the revealed word of the hour. And Lord, in our hearts, we rejoice knowing that your word told us that when these things begin to happen, you told us to look up for our redemption is drawing nigh. And this morning, Lord, as we gather here, we do not come, Lord, to be seen or to be heard. We do not come, Lord, to, Lord, to entertain or to be entertained. But, Father, we come here this morning in the power of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come here this morning, Lord, to get ourselves out of the way. Lord, that your word could come and that you could minister to the needs of your children. Lord, I don't know all the situations, but Lord, I am aware that you are here in this building this morning. And so, Father, we submit ourselves unto you. Lord, I pray that if there would be any sick among us, I pray you would heal them, O oh God. Lord, if there would be any bound here, I pray you would set them free, Lord. And Father, as we have gathered here for this youth service this morning, Lord, we know that so many times it can be projected, O oh God, Lord, that the youth or the church of tomorrow or the church of the future. But, Lord, we are well aware this morning that we are not promised tomorrow. We are not promised a future. So, Lord, as we stand here today, we are not speaking to the church of tomorrow, but we are speaking to the church of today. And I pray, Lord, you would help us today, God, to wake up and to realize who we are in your word. And, Father, Lord, I pray you would just have your way among us and bless every heart that be here today, Lord. And we'll be sure to give you all the praise, all the honor. And all the glory, for it's in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And all the believers said, amen. amen and amen. And may God richly bless you this morning. If you have your Bibles, we'll invite you to the book of Romans, uh, the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. The book of Romans, uh, the sixth chapter. And we want to look here in the first verse. And while you're turning there, we want to take this opportunity to greet you this morning and to I uh, say God bless you. Sure is an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. And uh, good to see everyone out this morning. I tell you, it's a, it's a real privilege uh, in this day and time to have a meeting. Amen. Uh, 
when the world don't know uh, how many can gather and who can do what, but just uh, Brother Wade was telling me a little bit over the phone the other day about the meeting this weekend and uh, the young people coming together. And I tell you, uh, with all the camps being canceled and things, I think this is a real honor this morning, amen, to be able to gather in the house of God and to have a meeting in the presence of the Lord. Sure, appreciate the invitation to come. Appreciate the confidence to be able to stand here and speak to you. And uh, God bless you, Brother Samuel. Good to see you and the church here. God bless you. And just want to look here this morning, the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. And the first verse, Paul here writing, says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. I love this. Even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So what I love here is Paul is showing you that serving the Lord is not taking away your life, but it's actually giving you life. For if you have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Now knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he live, liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I think this is a powerful thing. He says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should not obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as righteous is your members as righteousness unto God. For, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. In the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. We just have one verse we would like to read there, and we'll let you be seated. Amen. How many come to receive something from the Lord today? Amen. In the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, we want to look here in the sixth verse. Very uh, familiar scripture. I am sure we could all uh, quote it by memory this morning. But in Matthew, the fifth chapter, in the sixth verse, Jesus here speaking uh, the Sermon on the Mount in the Beatitudes and says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall for they shall be filled amen we ask the lord this morning to add the blessing uh, to the reading of his word as you may have your seats this morning we uh, thank the lord for the reading of the word of god amen uh, the word of god we believe is inspired we believe it's true we believe it's infallible we believe it's inerrant we believe it's the perfect word of God. And we've come here this morning, amen, to receive from that word. And I just want to, for a few moments here, speak to you from these scriptures. And if I will title it this morning, I'd like to talk to you on satisfied by being identified. Satisfied by being identified. And I think today that we are very much aware uh, the world we're living in today, there's two types of people. There is, there is a, a people that is satisfied and then there is a people that is dissatisfied. Amen. There is a people, amen, that, that are content. There is a people that is happy. There is a people that is uh, prospering, that is growing, that is going somewhere. And at the same time, there is a people that is dissatisfied. And I, I think it's quite amazing that we look around in our world today and we find uh, that even in our government, it is dissatisfied. And politics Politics, it is dissatisfied. Education, it is dissatisfied. And the thing about it is, is then when, when one person is dissatisfied, then people begin to satisfy them, try to, try to do something to satisfy them. Everybody, amen, is trying to satisfy each other. Can you say amen? 
And when we look here uh, at the word satisfied, it means to meet the expectations, uh, the needs, or the desires of someone. It means to fulfill a desire or a need. It means to provide someone uh, with adequate information or proof so that they are convinced about something. Adequately meet or comply uh, with a condition, an obligation, a demand, or it means to pay off a debt or to satisfy amen, a creditor. So, uh, uh, the word satisfied could actually mean convinced. Brother Bram would say it this way. He would preach a message called convinced and then concerned. He would say, I am convinced that this is God. I am convinced that Jesus is coming. I am convinced that this is his first appearing in the form of the Holy Ghost in the last days because the prophet said it shall be light in the evening time. I am convinced, amen, that the scriptures is fulfilled. I am convinced that the world's on the threshold of destruction. Now think of this in, in, in 1962 he's telling us that the world is on the verge of destruction and he's convinced of that he said but at the same time I am convinced amen that the coming of the Lord is at hand amen I am convinced that we have what we have is the Holy Ghost so this morning young people amen we have not come together amen to convince you of a creed we have not come together to convince you of a dogma or to convince you of some church idea amen but we have come here this morning that you may see amen that the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ is not a God of history amen he's not a historical God but he is an ever present help in the time of trouble now amen you must realize this morning that that satisfaction amen or that convincing must be in your soul it's not good enough amen just to be convinced in your flesh it's not good enough amen just to be convinced in your spirit but you've got to be convinced in your soul amen because the soul is the place where the Holy Ghost has got to seal. Amen. The Holy Ghost does not seal your flesh off. It does not seal your spirit, but it will seal your soul. Amen. Until the day of redemption. Amen. Can we, can we preach this morning? Amen. And I think that's what we've come together for. Amen. There's a lot of things we could tell you you need. We could tell you, amen, that you need an education, and that'll only satisfy you temporary. We could tell you that you need a, a job that'll, that'll pay you a lot of money. That will only satisfy satisfied temporary. Amen. But we have come here this morning to tell you, amen, that if you get the Holy Ghost, amen, it is not a temporary satisfaction. It is not a partial satisfaction, but the Holy Ghost is an eternal satisfaction that will put an assurance, a convincing in your soul, amen, that no matter what tomorrow holds, I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. My, to thank this morning that we have gathered here, amen, not that just our flesh would be fed. We have not come that just our spirits would be fed, amen, but we have come that our souls would be fed. I think here of how that David would say in the book of Psalms 42 verse 1, he would say, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, he would say, so panteth. Now that word panteth means to long for, amen. So in other words, he's saying, so my soul is longing after thee, O God. He would say, my soul thirsteth for God. Now notice what David says. He says, my soul thirsteth for the living God. Amen. When shall I come and appear before God? In the message thirst, he said not some historical or something that happened some years ago or some tale that someone told, but for the living God. Somebody say the living God. Amen. For the living God, a God that's ever present and his soul thirsted for that God, not for some historical something. Now in Psalm 63 verse 1, David goes on to say, Oh God, thou art my God and early will I seek thee my soul is thirsty for thee my, my flesh is longing for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is amen see I think this morning what we've come here for is because our souls amen is crying out amen our souls amen is needing a drink of water now let me say it this way amen I'm going to preach amen and if I got to do the preaching and the amen and it's going to take twice as long to get out of here amen so if I I preach and you, amen, will get downstairs and eat a lot quicker. Amen. Amen. Now think of this. Our souls, amen, are screaming out. Amen. Our souls are crying, amen, for something this morning. Amen. And the world is in the same condition. Amen. This morning their soul is crying out. Amen. Their soul is trying to find somewhere, amen, that they can find satisfaction. And do you realize what that thirst is doing? It is driving them to the worldly pleasures. Amen. But thank God this morning, young people, that the thirst 
first inside of your soul. It did not drive you to the things of the world this morning. Amen. But the thirst in your soul, amen, has driven you into the house of God. Amen. That the word could penetrate that life and could change you. Amen. Could satisfy you. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to drink of that water. Amen. Amen. I want to drink of the water. I, I, I want to go somewhere this morning. Amen. Where my soul cannot just be stimulated. Where my soul cannot just receive a feeling. Amen. But there might come a satisfaction. In the message light, Reverend says now, but God in his great economy for mankind has made man in the way that he wanted man to be. Now he made man to thirst. Amen. Do you realize, young people, you were actually made, you were actually created to thirst. Amen. Now that thirst, he said, did you notice David said, my soul thirsteth for thee. Just imagine my soul is thirsty, God. I am thirsting for you just like I was in a land where there was no water. He must find water. Amen. Or perish. Now you see, amen, if you've got a thirst this morning, you've got one of two options. Amen, you're either going to find water and you're going to live or you're going to perish. Now, Brother Bam says, God made a man with a thirst. That's a part of the human being is his thirst. But God made the thirst in man to thirst for God. And the devil has perverted it and make it thirst for his kingdom, for the world. Do you get it? The thirst in man is godly, for God made the man to thirst. Amen. Now we find then that God gives the control tower to you. He gives to you the things that you need. Now the control tower in you is what directs you and his thirst runs in on control tower and tells you what you have need of spiritually speaking now the control tower is in the body and in the soul also he said there is a control tower in the body that tells the need in your body and it's brought to you by thirst also there is a control tower in your soul that tells you the spiritual things that you have need of something in your spirit and you by this can tell what kind of of life is controlling you. Amen. See, then you cannot have an unholy ruler on the control tower and that unholy ruler drive you, amen, to a holy thirst. Amen. You cannot have a holy ruler on the tower, amen, and that holy ruler drive you to an unholy thirst. See, amen, the control tower or the one that's on the control tower is what is going to drive you to the thing to satisfy the thirst. He said when you can see, amen, what your desires are, then you can tell by that what kind of something that's in you that's creating this desire that you have. Amen. See, there is a certain thing that you thirst for. It can tell you in your soul what your desire is and by the nature of the thirst you have, I hope you can understand that. You, you Are you with me this morning? Amen. That if something does not change on the heart, amen, if something does not change in the soul, amen, then the thing that's controlling you is going to drive you. Amen. Amen. I think of how that God, the prophet of God said God created the thirst. Amen. Will you agree with me that God created that thirst? How many, how many is thirsty here this morning? <laughs> Amen. Let me just stop and see if you ain't thirsty. Ain't no need preaching on thirst. Amen. Amen. Are you thirsty this morning? Amen. Are you hungry this morning? Amen. Then that is not something you did on your own. That is something God created in you. Amen. See, now God created that thirst. Amen. And the prophet says, but Satan come in and he perverted the thirst. You look with me in Romans 125. The Bible says who changed. Now that word changed actually means exchanged. Amen. So who exchanged the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now for this cause God gave them up to vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into the, which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman buried in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, amen, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And Paul says to do things which are not convenient. Now you got to agree with me, amen, that reading Romans 1 right there is describing, amen, the day and the hour we're living in. Right. 
It is describing the world we're living in. See, because there was a thirst there. Amen. Because there was a God created thirst there. Amen. They were driven by that thirst, but because they did not find the place where that thirst could be satisfied. Amen. The Bible says that God give them up. Amen. God give them up. Amen. And then Paul says God gave them over. See, what happened was they were given over to a perverted thirst. You see what that word perverted means? It means to be changed over. It means to be made something different. The Bible of God will say when God made everything in the Garden of Eden, it was lovely. Then when Satan come in and perverted, he said, see, Satan cannot create nothing. There is only one creator, and that's God, but Satan perverts the original creation. And now he's got into this perverting the original creation of thirst. He said, see, now a woman, as I said before, she wants to be pretty. Amen. There, there, there's nothing wrong with a, with a young girl desiring to be pretty. Amen. That was something that God placed in her. There's nothing wrong with a young man desiring success. Amen. Desiring to go somewhere. There was something that was placed in him. Amen. But see, if you don't guard that thirst, amen, with the Holy Ghost, then the devil will pervert that thirst and he will exchange that thirst for a holy thirst unto an unholy thirst. Are you with me this morning? Amen. See, by the way, they are on the streets, haircut like a man, wearing man's clothes. Man turned around wearing women's clothes. Now, come on, you got to preach with me this morning. Amen. It's, it's not a mystery that men look like women today and women look like men. Amen. Amen. It's almost dangerous to say, sir, ma'am anymore. Amen. Because you don't know what you're talking to. Amen. But you see what it is. It's an example. Amen. That thirst has driven them there. Amen. They were thirsting for something and that thirst has driven them to where they are today. Amen. See, he said, uh, uh, women wear, uh, wearing men's clothes and men wearing women's clothes and a haircut like a woman. See, it's a perversion. The whole thing is perverted. Your food is perverted. He said the life is perverted. Your thirst perverted. Your desire is perverted. It's a day of perversion. It's a day of perversion. Amen. Now we find then that in these last days there are two spirits at work in this age. He would say the two spirits. One of them is God's Holy Spirit. And the other one is the devil's spirit working in deception. He said the people of the earth are now making their choice. Then if I could somehow or another, amen, maybe get it across to you this morning that this is not just a service. Amen. This is not just a youth meeting. This is not just a coming together to fellowship. Amen. But this is a decision time. Amen. This is a choice time. This is a time, amen, where you're either going to choose Christ, amen, or you're going to choose the devil, amen. This is a time where you're going to choose the Holy Ghost, and you're going to choose a life of holiness, or you're going to choose a life of perversion, amen. And I'll say this, you will not control that thirst. That thirst will be controlling you, amen. He said one of them is God's Holy Spirit, amen. The other is the devil's spirit. Now, amen, the devil's spirit works in deception, it's a day of deception. Now think of this. Amen. It's a day of deception when the prophet of God is going to say the deception is people are thinking they are Christians and they are not. Amen. They are thinking they are living the word and they are not. Amen. They are thinking that because they go to church and they pay their tithes and they do this and they do that. They are thinking that they're, they're, they're in good standing with God. But in reality they are not. Amen. Because their life is not bearing the fruit that the scripture said it would bear. Amen. But the glorious thing about it this morning. Amen. I feel good this morning, don't you? Amen. The glorious thing about it is is here in the middle of a day of perversion that God has released the Holy Ghost Amen. Back in the land today. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is here and he's calling out a bride for Christ. Amen. He is doing it by vindicating the promise of his word. Amen. This age showing that it is Christ. Amen. How many believes the message here this morning? Amen. Do you believe the message of the hour? Don't be ashamed. Amen. If you believe the message of the hour, let it be known. I believe. Amen. The message of the hour. Amen. Then I tell you what. The Holy Spirit is here today vindicating the message of the hour. Oh, the Holy Spirit is doing this so that the people believe God will be called out. Amen. The people that believe God. Somebody say believe God. The people that believe God. He said that those people will be called out of this chaos. Don't that 
make you want to say amen. Amen. That God has sent his Holy Ghost in this age. Brother Wade, in the middle of chaos, in the middle of confusion, in a day when boys don't know their boys and girls don't know their girls, but God has sent the Holy Ghost in this generation. Amen. To call a church. Amen. To call a young man. Amen. To call a young lady out of the chaos. Amen. Out of the confusion. My, the Holy Spirit is here this morning. Amen. And he's not here just to entertain you. He's not here just to make you feel good. He is here to call you. Amen. Out of this confusion. Oh, I say this morning, thank God. Amen. I say we are blessed people this morning. Amen. To be called out of confusion. Amen. To be called out of sin. Thank you. Amen. To be called out of misunderstandings. Amen. The Holy Ghost is here. Amen. To call us out of this chaos. He said the devil. Holy Spirit is here calling his church by the air as usual by perversion of the word of God like he did at the beginning. See? Amen. So God is the transformer. Amen. Do you realize that Hollywood is not the inventors of transforming power? Amen. But actually God is the original transformer. Amen. Then God is the transformer. Then what is Satan? Satan is the deformer. Amen. God is the transformer and Satan is the deformer. In general Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved. Amen. Amen. Can we preach there for a second? Amen. Let's say that together. And the spirit of God moved. Amen. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. Now notice the condition. It was without form. It was void and it was dark. Do you realize what that does? That describes, amen, a life without the Spirit of God. It describes a young man without the Spirit of God. It describes a young lady, amen, without the Spirit of God. It is a life without form. It is a life that is void. It is a life that is dark. Amen, but can I tell you that's not the way you got to stay. Amen, that's not the condition you got to live in when the Spirit of God moves. It will move you, amen, from formlessness and voidness and emptiness and darkness into a garden of Eden. In Genesis, the first chapter, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Bible said in the beginning back there that this world was without form and was void. You ever been there before? Amen. Have you ever been there where you felt like your life was just was just without any purpose? Amen. When you felt like the day and, and, and the things you were doing was without any purpose. Have you ever been there? Amen. You know what that is? That is a thirst. That is a thirst in your soul that is telling you you was brought up on this earth for a purpose. Amen. I think there was nothing, just darkness and chaos. What a horrible shape it must have been and nothing. Amen. But way in the darkness yonder. Notice this earth that we're sitting. Uh, all right. Can I preach to you this morning? Amen. How many loves to go sightseeing? How many likes to see the beautiful things like like you go out to Arizona and see the see, see Sedona and you see uh, go out to Rockies. You see all the beautiful things. Go to, go to Canada. See the Niagara Fall. Amen. There's all kinds of beautiful things. But do you realize at one point it was not like that? Amen. Do you realize at one point it was not a beauty spot? It was not at all. It was a formlessness. It was a voidness. It had no beauty to it. Amen. But the Bible said, amen, that the Spirit of God moved. And when the Spirit of God moved, it moved the world from nothing into something. And I say this morning, that same Spirit is in this building today. Amen. You may be here. You may be feeling like you're void. You may be feeling like you're empty, but the Spirit of God is here this morning. Amen. To move you. Amen. From chaos into the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I say this morning, come on in Holy Ghost. I say come on in this morning. Amen. Move across our young men. Move across our young ladies. Move across our elders. Move across the church once again and let the power of God amen transform. Amen. Hearts and lives. Amen. See he said, oh, it was dark. Amen. There was no light. 
He said there was wandering star twisted around the orbits out there somewhere. It must have been a it must have been a terrific mass or something lost like it was. Couldn't find its way, and that's the way we become when we become wandering stars away from God, just without hope, without God, without just just churning around out in darkness, not knowing where we're going. See, and God took that great chaos of darkness and He transformed it into the Garden of Eden. See by his word then that's how we are transformed is by God's word it done that perfect will of God for it was transformed amen from a chaos into a garden of Eden by the word of God amen now think of this amen until the spirit of God moved up on this earth it was not serving any purpose amen it was not doing anything it was just churning it was just wondering it was just moving amen but when the spirit of God oh mercy when the Spirit of God moved upon it. It actually moved it, amen, from just being there to being in the perfect will of God. Amen. Now he wants to transform us this morning. Do you believe that? Amen. How does he want to transform us? He wants to transform us by the renewing of our minds. See, now Satan comes in and puts in a deforming to the word. But the prod of God said, see, is this, that the deformer came in. Now how many knows that it took 6,000 years to create this earth? It took 6,000 years. Remember I said it took the creator 6,000 years. He said with the original word to bring forth every word. He said, is that right? is that that he said now see the deformer came in and as God had took 6,000 years amen with the original word to bring forth every word of his kind everything that he made would be God's own word bringing forth of its kind now the deformer somebody say the deformer now the deformer has took 6,000 years <laughs> amen and he's deformed the word of God and what has he done he has brought his self to a new type of Eden he said it's now Satan's Eden amen that's where we're living today amen brother if you can give me more back in my ear I'd appreciate it amen see he was brought himself to a new type of Eden now think of this the spirit of God moved and changed the world amen from a chaos to a garden of Eden but in the last days, amen, the deformer is going to come in this day in the world you're living in and he's going to transform it or deform it rather from a garden of Eden into Satan's Eden. Amen. Now let me just go ahead and preach her to you for a second. Amen. Because the devil hates you. Are you awake? You got a pulse? Amen. The devil hates you. You know why he hates you? It's because you are living in the middle of Satan's Eden. Now think of this. Amen. And you're, you're controlling him in his own Eden. Right here in his own Eden, there is a young man. There is a young lady. There is a young man. There is a young lady that is living right here in the middle of all this chaos. But they've not been given to that chaos because they've been called by the Spirit of God. My, then I think of how in this day we're living in in Satan's Eden, how the prophet of God is going to come with not a casual message. He is not going to come with a lukewarm message, but he is going to come with a message message of zeal. He is going to come with a message of passion. He is going to come with a message of fire. Amen. To declare to the church, it is now time to arise to your identification. Amen. Let me just tell you this morning, you're not just a school student. Amen. You are not just a, you are not just a teenager. Young man, you are not just a young boy this morning. Amen. You are the church of the living God. You are the pride of Jesus Christ. And may I announce to you this morning, it is time to rise up. It is time to rise up. It is time to stand in the position that God has called you in. Amen. I'll just share this with you. As I was as I was coming home from some meetings last week and I was praying and just listening to a tape. And this this just began to unfold to me. It's a tape called Identify with Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I love those tapes. <laughs> Amen. In the message, Identify with Christ. But they're going to come along and he's going to say now, uh, he's going to read Romans 6. And he said, now, if I should take a text now for about 20 minutes, I would say this identification identified with Christ. Now, what amazed me is when Brother Brown actually begins to speak on identification, amen, he doesn't automatically go into identification. He starts with satisfaction. He says, you know, there is in the country today so many dissatisfied people. It's amazing when you get around and find out so much dissatisfaction. People hardly know what they want to do. Amen. They come 
come down the road at about 70, 80 miles an hour in a 30 mile hour zone, slide the brakes, turn around the corner, start up with such speed. We're all guilty. <laughs> Amen. Until they burn a new tires half off. Now, you want to know something? There's a difference in somebody that's got that's paying for their own tires. Amen. And, and mom and daddy's still paying for them. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. If mom and daddy's still paying for them, they're making donuts and burnouts and everything. Amen. But when they're paying for their own tires, <laughs> amen, they don't hit that 70 mile per hour zone so quick. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. See, but, but because they're trying to find satisfaction. Amen. See, they'll go a city block. He said they'll go crazy to go sit and talk a while. Seems like people don't know what they want to do. Now, Brother, Brother, Brother Andrew, what are you talking about? See, what they're doing is they're trying to achieve something. Amen. They're trying to achieve something. Now, what is the greatest thing that we can achieve? If I would pass this microphone around this morning and I would ask you, what's the greatest thing? What's the, Amen. No doubt with this many people, there would be different answers. Amen. But Let's go back to what a prophet said. He said the greatest thing we can achieve is life. Somebody shout life. Life is the greatest thing that we can achieve. See, if you would go to heaven this morning and you would walk around by the way and you would find Abraham, you would say, Abraham, what's the greatest thing? He would say life. Amen. No matter what anything else, amen, life is the greatest thing that anyone could achieve. Amen. Now, see, when you've got life, then there comes a struggle with life. Amen. I think it's amazing and how can I overcome but it says what are you living for he said so you can die he said what are you struggling for so you can live what are you living for so you can die he said wouldn't it be most foolish if we didn't make Christ our absolute amen now think of this this morning church we are going to struggle to live all right young people amen y'all know what I'm talking about they go around saying the struggle is real are you hearing me? Amen. They ain't got a clue about what they're talking about. Amen. They're just going around saying something. Amen. All right. You got a kid. Amen. That's going to school. Don't have to pay no bills. Amen. Eats, eats, eats mom and daddy's food. Amen. Don't have no phone bill. They got mama paying the phone. Amen. They go around saying the struggle is real. Now, come on. <laughs> yeah, struggle ain't real. They don't even know what a struggle is. Amen. But, but you want to talk about a real struggle? A real struggle is when you set forth a foot to serve God. Amen. A real struggle is when you surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm looking at some young people this morning that knows what the struggle is. Amen. They know what it's like to live in this world. They know what it's like to feel the pressures of hell. Amen. But at the same time there is a holy God inside of them that is sustaining them. That is keeping them. That is providing for them. That is guiding them in the midst of a chaotic world. Oh, there is some young people here this morning that knows what the struggle is. Amen. They, they, they are witnesses. Amen that there is a God that will release an overcoming power in your life. My, he said, see, then, then there becomes a struggle. Now, what is that struggle? It is living between desires. Do you realize what produces the dissatisfaction in the life of people is living between two desires? He said, see that control tower of the soul, that one for the body? For instance, the flesh thirsts to satisfy the desires that's in the body, and the spirit desires for the things that's in the soul. See, and many times these war one against the other. We find there what's a great trouble today that too many people try to live between two desires. Amen. For one of them desires the things of the earth, and the other desires the things of heaven. I remember one time as a young man, I heard a preacher preach a sermon. He called it cross-eyed Christians. <laughs> and then I thought, wow, that's a title. Where are you going with this? He said, cross-eyed Christians. Amen. He said, a cross-eyed Christian, amen, is a Christian that's got one eye on the world, and they got one eye on the on, on heaven, and they're trying to live between the two worlds. They're, they're, they're trying to satisfy the earth. Then they're trying to dissatis- satisfy heaven. Amen. They're living. And I'll say this this morning. Amen. There's people here this morning in this building that knows what I'm talking about. Amen. Because you battle the same thing. Amen. Young people, we battle the same same thing. Amen. To live for God. Amen. To live for the devil. Amen. To to fit in with my friends or to stand out for Jesus Christ. Amen. But can I tell you this morning why? That every time you try to fit in, something raises up inside of you and says it ain't going to work. Every time you try to change who you are, something speaks in your heart and says you're you're more than that. You know why? Because there's a soul in there. Amen. There's a thirst in there that's telling you you was not born to fit in. You was born to stand out. Amen. You was not born to be a part of this chaos. The Spirit of God is here calling you. He is here drawing you this morning. He is here to transform you. Amen. To thank this one of the prophets said the world is full of people 
that had become dissatisfied. Now, you know that's the truth. Hey, Amen. You go to the store. Hey, Amen. And you, I, I, I'm just going to preach to you for a second. One thing that drives me crazy is when I go to the store and I stand out there, brother, and I hold the door for somebody. You, you do that. Stand there and hold the door. And you know what gets me is when they walk by you and don't say thank you like you owed it to him. Now, one of these days, I'm going to get brave enough. And Brother Samuel, I'm going to say you're welcome. It may be my last day on earth, but I'm going to say it. Amen. You, you know what I'm talking about? It drives me crazy but because they're dissatisfied. Amen. Now watch. Amen. They don't even know you, but they're treating you the same way they're treating people at home. You know why? Because they're dissatisfied. Home. See, amen, a dissatisfied person, amen, is a person that can't be happy with nothing. Well, let's just go ahead and preach a while. <laughs> amen. Amen. They're not happy with the church. They're not happy with their family. They're not happy with the preacher. Amen. No matter what you do, they're always trying. Amen. Because they're dissatisfied. Then if you don't get that dissatisfaction under control, it's going to begin to scream for your life. It's going to begin to scream for your life. Amen. And the message identify with Christ. Paragraph 55. Some of them get so disturbed until they go down the, to the drugstore and they purchase for themselves a bottle of arsenic or sulfuric acid or something and commit suicide, they find them laying dead. Some will turn their gas jets on in the room or sit in their automobiles with the pipe for the carbon monoxide gas trying to get away from life. Are you, are, you, are you reading the same thing I'm reading? They're trying to get away from life. Amen. The greatest thing they can achieve is the thing they're trying to get away from. Some of them will climb up to the bridge, write a little note and stick it uh, in their coat and lay it down and plunge themselves in death in the river, jumping off of mountains, high towers. Some will take a pistol, put it up to their head and actually blow their brains out. They're just dissatisfied. It wasn't that they was a bad person. It wasn't that they, 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 they wasn't that they come out of a bad family or, or, or they, no, it was that they were dissatisfied. Oh church, hear me this morning. Amen. We've got to come to a place of satisfaction. Amen. We've got to, well brother Andrew, I'm in the message. Amen. We're exempt from that. No, we're not. There's suicidal spirits around this message. There's suicidal demons. Amen. That attack our young people. Amen. But can I preach to you this morning? We have not come here amen to give those demons room. We have come here to denounce them spirits and to cast them out by the power of the living God and to announce unto you that there is a place of satisfaction. Oh, they're dissatisfied. <laughs> Amen. It's not even something you've done to them. They're just dissatisfied, Brother Wade. <laughs> Amen. Brother Bam said the hospitals are full of dissatisfied people. The insane institutions are overrun, dissatisfied. They don't know what they do want. There seems to be something that they're, they're reaching after, but they just never come to it. Amen. See, amen. He says mothers are no longer satisfied just being mothers. Amen. Fathers are no longer satisfied. Amen. Just being father. Amen. Now, come on. Amen. He said old men wants to be teenagers. <laughs> He said, old man wants to be, amen. So, amen. So it's not just young people, amen, battling dissatisfaction. We got, we got adults. Well, let's just preach. We're here. Amen. Spaghetti will be here in a little bit, right? Amen. Amen. You, you see it. You, you see him manifested. Amen. You take a, you take a man in his seventies and, and he, he, I'm, he, I'm not an old man. I don't want to be an old man. Amen. So he goes out and gets a bunch of, a bunch of American Eagle clothes and, and goes out and gets him some sneakers and amen, trying to look like a kid. Amen. That man, he's not a bad person. He's just dissatisfied. He's just come to a place that life has no satisfaction. Old church. Amen. See, the old man wants to be a teenager. He see, they'll cut his hair off and make a duck tail in the back. The teenager wants to be like one of these rock and roll kings. Man seems to be unsatisfied. Amen. Now notice here, your example then is what becomes the standard of your life. What, what you focus on, what you look to is what becomes the standard of your life. He said, see, they've set them up in his example. Amen. Now notice here. He said, Cassidy, now, now uh, uh, if I mention some of these, you're going to think, what in the world is he talking about? Well, I'm going to mention them anyhow. He said, Pound uh, hop along, Cassidy. Amen. He said, uh, uh, Roy Rogers. Now, we may know that. <laughs> Mr. Dillon. Amen. All these are, these are examples. Television programs has been set before the people. He said, they've set them up as an example. They've taken them for their standard of life. He said, see, then the women. Amen. He said, those, those, those little boys, they begin to look at those examples, and they turn out to be 
be gangsters. He said, see, women turn out to be prostitutes and street-walking delinquent people. Men turn out to be gamblers, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Churches try to impersonate the other church, the big church. See, it's not just young people dissatisfied. The whole world is dissatisfied. Amen. Amen. Politics are dissatisfied. Amen. Churches are dissatisfied. Amen. But I'm so glad to announce to you this morning there is a refuge. Amen. There is a place this morning that you can run into and you can be satisfied. Amen. Amen. You see then the thirst. Amen. Am I doing okay on time? Amen. The thirst in your soul. Amen. It becomes, becomes a thirst for an example. Now you realize in this world there are two types of examples. There are good and bad examples. Now in 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 6, let's look at that together. 1 Thessalonians 3 and 6, Paul writing says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. And not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we behave ourselves disorderly among you. We behave not ourselves disorderly among you neither did we eat many neither did we eat any man's bread for naught but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we not that that we be not chargeable to any of you now think of verse 9 here of 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 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 9 now because not because we have not power but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Now see the word example there means a pattern. It means a sign. It means a suggestive of anything. Representation, figure, copy an example for imitation or the thing to be imitated or of a thing to be shunned. Now notice there is a good example which is something that is to be imitated which is the pattern which is the standard which is what you should embrace. Then there is a bad example which is to be shunned. Now when Paul was writing to young Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.12 he said let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example to the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You see, now, now notice here, amen, in the Bible there is good examples. At the same time, there are bad examples. You look here with me in Hebrews 4.11. The Bible says, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. What is the rest? The Holy Ghost. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Amen. Now see, those that did not enter the promised land, they set forth an example of what unbelief can do. It can hinder you from the promises of God. You look here in Hebrews chapter 4. He says, what is it? He said, the pillar of fire is here. Amen. The angel of the Lord is with us. He's doing the very same things he said he would do. And people stumble around and say, oh, well, I guess it's all right. That's pretty good. Oh, I guess it's okay. Be careful that you don't fall in the same snare of unbelief. You take it with all your heart. All right. Now look here. Amen. Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen an example of a city of what happens when you welcome in perversion amen now we're going to have church here today okay amen it's an example when you welcome perversion in amen Sodom and Gomorrah stands today as an example the Bible says turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemn them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly oh church when you look in Luke 17 31 in that day he shall he shall be up on the housetop and his staff in the house stuff in the house let him not come down to take it away and he that is in the field let him likewise not return back now he says remember Lot's wife say that with me together remember Lot's wife amen remember now why would he say remember Lot's wife amen because Lot's wife is going to become an example of what happens to a person when they look back the Bible says, remember Lot's wife. She merely looked over her shoulder. Eve merely stopped for a moment. That's all she done. Lot's wife just looked back, and God turned that righteous man, Lot, his wife, amen, to a pillar of salt by just a little bitty thing, just disobeying his commandments, enough to just look back and see what all that fire was about, and she turned. Amen. Now, you think about something. Amen. A woman there one second, and the next second, she's a pillar of salt. Amen. Right there. I mean, right I remember I was down there preaching for Brother Blue one time. Some of you may know him. We were sitting around the table eating lunch, and he said, hey, he said, pass me Lot's wife. <laughs> 
And they went and they said the salt. <laughs> amen. See, one one woman in just a, amen, just in one second went from a from a, from a pillar from a woman to a pillar of salt. Amen. See, that's an example, young people. This ain't the time to look back. Amen. And I'll say this with everything within me. Amen. If you look away from this message, you will go from being a young person with a future. Amen. To being just somebody else in society with just another life. But church, the message of the hour has come, young people. Amen. To set you apart. Amen. To identify you. To put a seal upon you as somebody that is satisfied. Oh my. Amen. If we can look at Sodom and Gomorrah and see what they become. If we can look at Hebrews 4 and see what they become. Then this morning. Amen. Let's not just look at the bad examples. Amen. But let's look at our example. Which is the perfect example. Which is the Lord Jesus Christ. In John 13, 15. For I have given you an example. That you should do as I have done to you. Now Paul Brother Bam says see. And, and identify with Christ. Paragraph 65, 62. But they are trying to find something to identify themselves with. And the, I, I'm, I'm not going to hold you all day, okay? Amen. And the reason they are doing it is because there's something in them that God made them that. But God made them an example to be identified with. And that was when he made Jesus Christ to become your Savior. That's the example. That's what people should want is to be identified with Jesus, to be like him. In Matthew 11:29, 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. See, you are to learn. Learn of your example, Jesus Christ. Matthew 16, 24. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You are to follow your example. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, you are to look unto your example. Amen. 1 Peter 2, 21. For even hereunto were ye called because Christ suffered for us giving us an example that ye should follow his steps see the human nature is why there is so many dissatisfied people God gave them a nature they've got a nature that makes them want to have something to identify themselves with they must have something that they want to be like they must have an objective in life amen see the prophet said little boys want to be hop along Cassidy let's bring that to today little boys want to be Michael Jordan amen or they want to be Shaquille O'Neal amen they're looking at all these examples amen little girls he said they want to be Annie Oakley's amen you look, you look at girls today amen they see they see a filthiness on the on the television they see filthiness in the, in the in the internet and they begin to pattern themselves why they're trying to satisfy that thirst inside of them I hope I'm getting through this morning they're trying to satisfy that thirst and that thirst is driving them oh if they only wanted to be like Jesus as they much as they want to be like earthly examples but said the Sunday schools would be running over everywhere now I'm just going to preach here for a few minutes because I take young people's services very serious especially ones like this morning because I'm not just preaching to a bunch of young men and young, and young ladies I'm preaching to the future hey amen I'm preaching to the church of today I'm preaching to young men that's going to grow up and be deacons they're going to be preachers hey amen and let me say this what we need is we need integrity hey amen we need character hey amen we need young ladies that are, that, that, are not, that are not modeling themselves after the things of the world but they're modeling themselves after the power of the Holy Ghost Hey Amen. I was in my, my room this morning there at the hotel getting ready. I was listening to a tape and I could hear people walking up down the up and down the hallway, you know, and they were carrying on. Well, I didn't care. They were disturbing me, so I was playing my tape and disturbed them. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey Amen. Brother Bram preached along. He said, now listen. He said, any woman that gets out of the kitchen's out of her place. I thought, oh, that, that could get me kicked out of this hotel real quick. <laughs> but you got to come back to Scripture. It's Bible. <laughs> Well, I kind of figured it'd get tight there, but it, it, but but as the standard changed. Has, has, has Satan's eaten? Has it changed to what we preach? Listen, friends, that's the world. That's the problem with the world today. Amen. They're changing, changing, trying to satisfy. Amen. But let's come back to the landmark. Let's come back to what God has vindicated. My, to think this morning the prophet said, if people of this day with that great desire and great ambition to be like somebody, for an example, if they took Christ as their example, then we could, we could, all right, now, I won't get in trouble here, Brother Wade, but stay with me. Amen. Now, we want to talk about defunding police. Let's talk about it. If you would take Christ as your example he said we could fire every police there was in the nation I just might run for office with that hope 
Amen. If we want to talk about it, let's go back to Bible principles. Amen. Amen. Defunding police ain't going to change this world. Amen. He said the only thing that's going to change this world is let's come back to Bible principles. Let's come back to Christ being our example. He said if Christ was our example, he said everybody would be meek and humble. Everybody would be kind and have brotherly love one for the other. There would never be a divorce case ever played in our country. There would never be any sickness. We could even dismiss hospitals. If everybody tried to make Jesus Christ their example, we would have need of nothing else. But the satisfaction is identifying yourself with Jesus Christ. Let me say this this morning. The world is in an identity crisis this morning. An identity crisis is a period of uncertainty, confusion, in which a person's sense of identity becomes insecure, typically due to a change in their expected aims or role in society. You young people, we go through identity crises. Oh, my Lord, where'd all the angels come from this morning? Anybody ever go through those identity crises? You've been there. We've all been there. Well, Brother Andrew, bless God, I never have. Well, Brother Branham did. He said, when I was a little boy, he said, I read the book of Tars and the Apes. <laughs> Mom had an old rug that Miss Walter well, Giver laid before the dresser. I cut the thing up, made Tarzan suit, slept in a tree for a week. I wanted to be Tarzan. He said, when I read the book of the Lone Star Ranger, I wrote her broomstick being a hobby horse, trying to be the Lone Star Ranger. It's no more than what people will do. It's what you read, the music you listen to, go into a restaurant, and this old rock and roll, no wonder people are going crazy. That's enough to drive a human being crazy. See, whatever you read or listen to is what you become then Solomon is going to make make a very very profound statement in Ecclesiastes 12 1 and he's going to say remember now thy creator I'm tying this together remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them See, but oh, I'll be thankful all through eternity. One day, I read about Jesus. He said, and that satisfied me. I want to be like him. That's my desire is to be able to turn the other cheek, go the second mile, be able to forgive when the odds is all against you, hold nothing against nobody. Amen. I, I'm, 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 I'm rushing, but I'm going to try to slow down here for a second. Amen. Because I, I just want to tell you something that I, I've seen. I've seen it as an evangelist traveling and preaching by the grace of God. I've seen adults in prayer lines, amen, with things stacked up in their lives that should have been dealt with 20 years ago. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Things that started in childhood, that started as young people, it begins to one thing up on top of another. Amen. They become bitter. Amen. Amen. Something happens. I, I'll just say it this way. I remember I was in a prayer line one time down in Florida, and a, and a girl came up for a prayer. She said, Brother Andrew, she said, pray for me. She was just weeping. She was crying. Amen. I said, Sister, what do you need from the Lord? She said, I don't even know how to put it in words. She said, I was born in a foreign country. She said, in that foreign country, I was brought over here. She said, I don't know my mama. I don't know my daddy. She said, I was abused. I was hurt. I was used. She said, I'm so bitter. Brother Samuel, she actually said, I'm so bitter. Amen. She said, I can't forgive nobody. She said, here I am, almost 30 years old, been living like this. I said, sister, when did it start? She said, when I was just a child. Amen. Now, hear me this morning, young people. This is your hour. This is your time to defeat that thing. Well, Brother Andrew, it was passed down through family generations. That has never Nothing to do with you. Amen. You have been anointed. You have been called. You have been chosen to stand in this hour and to destroy the curse. See, amen, whether you realize or not, amen, young people is going to grow up and get married. And there's going to be families. And I ask you this morning, young boy, are you carrying things in your life today that you want to carry into a marriage? Amen, young lady, are you carrying things in your heart today that you want to carry into a marriage? There's a place today. There's a place provided today. Oh, Brother Andrew, I'm proud of my temper. Do you want to carry that into a marriage? Oh, Brother Andrew, I tell you what, Daddy told me I shouldn't dress like that and I shouldn't look like this and I ain't going to listen to nobody. Hey, Amen. You want to carry that into a marriage? Are you with me this morning? You, you, want, you want to carry that? Well, Brother Andrew, I was hurt and, and, and I don't trust nobody. You want to carry that into a marriage? 
You want to carry that thing the rest of your life? I don't know about you, but I think this is a good place this morning to lay that thing down. I think this is a good place this morning to get our eyes off of worldly examples. Come back and be identified with Jesus Christ. But Andrew, God, he don't want me there. He, 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 don't, he, he don't want me. He don't want no part of me. My, my life is too messed up. I've, I've done things that I'd be ashamed for anybody to know about. But let me just ask you this. If God didn't want you there, why did he provide a way for you to get there? Well, Brother Andrew, God don't want me in the church. I, well, if God don't want you in the church, why did he provide a way for you to be here? Well, Brother Andrew, God, he, 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 I don't even know why I'm here this morning. Why, why does God even want me here? Why, why, why am I here in this youth service? I, God don't want me in this youth service. Well, I guarantee you a lot of you had to ride with somebody to get here. Well, let's just preach a while. Why did God give you the opportunity to get here this morning? Because he wants you here. He wants you here this morning for a purpose. And I'm going to close with this. In the Old Testament, when a man wanted to be identified at the house of God, he took the most innocent thing he could find, which was a lamb. And he knew that lamb was free from sin because it knew no sin. And he went and took the lamb and put his hand upon his head and confessed his sins. Now catch this. I'll tell you, I was, I was, I was standing this the other night in my office, and I about, I about shouted the place down. I know you wouldn't believe that, but I did. By faith, he transferred his sins on the lamb and the innocence of the lamb back on him. Are you hearing me? Then the lamb died because it was a sinner. So through the transmission of sins to the lamb, the man went from being a sinner to being, a, to being innocent. Amen. And the lamb went, from, oh God, the lamb went from being innocent to being a sinner. Notice, and died a sinner. And man lived by an act of faith, obeying what God said. But what did he do? He went right back out of the temple with the same desire that he had when he came in because when the blood cell is broken, he said, and when that blood cell was broken, the life of that lamb would not coincide or come back into human life because it was an animal life. Amen. The man went out with the same desire he had, so therefore he committed sins continually all the time again. Amen. But here's the thing about it. That was under the blood of bulls and goats. It only provided a temporary satisfaction. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Can you imagine coming in the church? Amen. And you're, amen. We'll, we'll just put it this way. Amen. In the old days, am I holding too long, brother, brother Wade? In the old days, you'd have been out and done something wrong. And so in those days, you had to go get a lamb. Now, I tell you, we ought to be thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ today. Amen. Because in those days, you had to go get your lamb and bring it to church. Now, your lamb's got to come get you and bring you to church. <laughs> Shouldn't be that way, but anyhow. They would go get a lamb, and they would bring that lamb in, and they would kill that lamb, and that bleedy, bloody lamb, they would lay their hands upon it, and that lamb would take away the guilt. It would take away the shame. Amen. Maybe they went out and stole something. It would take away the shame of stealing. Maybe they went out and told a lie. It would take away the shame of lying. Amen. But brother, when they walked out the door, the desire to do it was still there. So all they received under the blood of the bull and goat was a temporary satisfaction. Oh, this morning, young people, as I close. Amen. I want to announce unto you that we are not here this morning under the blood of bulls and goats, under temporary satisfaction. We are here this morning under a perfect, under an eternal satisfaction, which is an eternal blood, which has produced an eternal redemption. For he hath made him to be sins for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But there come a time when God, somebody say God. God. Say it with everything within you. God, God. made us an example. Amen. And he gave us the Lord Jesus. Now, brother, wait, this is where I about tore my office down. And when a sinner puts his hands upon his precious head and confesses his sins 
and his sins is transferred from the sinner to Jesus. And the innocence, the innocence of Jesus is transferred by the Holy Ghost back into that person. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Young people, are you hearing me this morning? Well, Brother Andrew, I've done this and I've done that. Amen. But I come to tell you this morning. Amen. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand up. Amen. If you'll take your hand this morning and, and, and symbol, just lay it on the head of your lamb. Amen. Identify yourself with your lamb. You know what? You'll come in here, amen, carrying that sin, but you'll leave here carrying the innocence of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. What a, what a blood. What a lamb. By the Holy Ghost, that individual becomes as innocent as Jesus himself. There's where I want to be identified. For by one spirit, we all baptized into one body. Now, let me say it this way. To be identified with Christ is to move from dissatisfaction in life to satisfaction. I've got to leave you with this. And remember what satisfied means. Satisfied means to meet an obligation or to pay off a debt. And David said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. So in other words, David is saying, I was born in sin. I was born in debt. Oh, the Bible said there was a jubilee year come, though. <laughs> People that were sold out for debts that they had owed, they owed a debt they could not pay. So they went and sold themselves to people for slaves. But ever so often... <laughs> Ever so often there would come a day of grace. There would come a jubilee. What we know as the jubilee year. When this jubilee year was come, then there went a priest and sounded a trumpet. And that trumpet denoted to every slave no matter how long he had been serving, how much longer he had to serve. When the trumpet sounded, the slave was made free. He could lay down the hole. He could go home to his children. He didn't have to work any longer. The trumpet gave gave not an uncertain sound, but it gave a certain sound, and the man could lay down his trumpet and go home free from slavery. Then, Brother Andrew, what are you doing? I have been blowing the gospel trumpet to you this morning, and I have been telling you when you leave these meetings today, amen, sis, when you leave these meetings, you don't have to leave a slave. Young man, you don't have to leave a slave to the world. There is a liberty. Amen. There is a power. There is a grace in the house of God. Amen. That could, you can throw that thing down. You can throw it down this morning. Anybody want to throw it down with me? Just throw that thing down. Throw that habit down. You can leave here today free. Brother Andrew, you're crazy for this next statement. Well, you just call me crazy. You can leave here today as innocent as Jesus Christ. Woo! Makes me want to put my shouting shoes on, brother. You can leave here today as innocent as Jesus Christ. What we need today is anointed messengers from God sounding the gospel trumpet declaring the debt has been paid for. Brother, if you owed me $20, do you owe me $20? Okay. I thought you might. Wishful thinking, right? But if he owed me $20, what's your name? John. John. If John owed me $20, and every time John got around me, I'd say, hey, John, how you doing? He'd just kind of look at me and smile. Well, I'm doing okay. You know why he's not going to smile and have a good time with me? You know why? It's because there's a debt hanging over his head. He can't look at me without thinking about that debt. He can't shake my hand without thinking about that. That debt is controlling his life. I said, come on, John, let's go on a trip. Let's go somewhere. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It's not that he don't want to go. The debt is stopping him. <laughs> the debt is stopping him. He wants to go. He wants to fail. But the debt is there. What's your name? Michael. That's a good name. <laughs> he said he knew. <laughs> 
Maybe Andrew fits in there. Maybe John fits in, but Michael's a good. <laughs> Michael comes along and says, you know what, John, I'm going to pay that debt. Amen. And Michael, amen. Michael hears John say, I want to go on that trip with you, but I can't because I've got a debt. I want I want to talk to you, but that debt is haunting me. And Michael says, you know what? I'm going to pay that debt. Amen. And he pays that debt. You know what that does? That brings a freedom in John's life that when he sees me, he can shake my hand. If I want to go on a trip, he can go. Are you hearing me? Why? Because when the debt is paid, it brings a liberty. And you know, as well as I know, there's times you come in the house of God, you want to raise your hands. You want to say amen when the preacher says anybody want to go to heaven something inside of you says I want to go amen but there's a debt hanging there if you ain't got the Holy Ghost and been born again there is a debt hanging there amen but may I tell you this morning amen the debt collector is in the building amen the debt payer is in the building he is here this morning hallelujah he is here this morning to release you of that debt you want to raise your hands this morning, go ahead and raise them. You know why? The debt's paid for. <laughs> Amen. You want to talk about going to heaven? Go ahead and talk about it because the debt is paid for. I'm happy and the devil's mad because the debt is paid for. I am sinless. I am spotless. I am innocent by the satisfying portion of the Holy Ghost. Oh, he paid our debt. But you know what, John? I'm trying to quit. But you know what, John? In a few days, somebody could come along and say, do you really pay that $20 debt off? You didn't, you didn't pay that debt. But when, when the debt was paid to me, I wrote him a receipt. Paid in full. When they tell him the debt's not paid, Brother Samuel, he can take the receipt. And he can wave it in the accuser's face and say, but wait a second, I've got a receipt. And the prophet of God said, what is the Holy Ghost? What is that pillar of fire? It is that abstract. It is that receipt that your debt is paid. I'm done here this morning, church. But if you want something to shout about, I'm going to give you something to shout about. Your ticket in the rapture is paid for. Amen. Your ticket in the glory is paid for. Your, your body change is paid for. Young people, you don't have to go to the world. You don't have to go to pleasure. You don't have to go to entertainment. It's paid for this morning. You are the innocent children of the living God. Won't you stand to your feet this morning? Paid for this morning, Brother Wade. The devil can holler about the dead all he wants to, but I got a receipt. I got a receipt. And when I hear the Spirit of God say, you can overcome these things, I raise up and say, amen. The debt's been paid for. The debt is satisfied this morning. You know, when people, they become debt-free, they, they do crazy things. They really do. The craziest thing is, though, when they get out of debt, they go back in debt. They celebrate getting out of debt by going back in debt. That makes a lot of sense, don't it? But you know what? A freedom has come to their life. A freedom has come in their heart. And if there's not a restraint there to control it, they'll go out like I said, going debt, celebrating being out of debt. But when Paul wrote that in Romans 6 and said, the grace of God shall abound. So because grace is here, they thought, well, let's just go sin. And Paul said, God forbid. God forbid that the debt was paid and you would go back in debt again. Brother, sister, I'll leave you with this this morning. Brother Bram said, on the day of Pentecost, it come down that pillar of fire broke apart like that, and tongues of fire set up on them. He said, not their tongues, but tongues of fire set up on each of them. An elected, selected group identified by this pillar of fire showing that God had separated himself into man. Do you get it? He said, God the Logos separating himself into man. God not in one person. He's in the church universal. That's the reason Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do, all, shall you do more. Now, King James says greater, but the right translation there is more than this shall you do. God was bottled and confined in one man, Jesus Christ. Somebody say it with me, but now. But now he's bottled and, con Glory. Bottled and confined in the whole universal church of the living God. 
How many has got the Holy Ghost here this morning? Amen. You have got the receipt. Yes. Amen. Your debt is paid. Yes. You know why people's out there drinking this morning? They're in debt. Amen. They were born in debt. They, Brother Bam said you can't blame them. They were born. They were born in debt. That's the nature they was born with. We was all born with sin. Shape and iniquity. But isn't it something? Oh my. There's, there's an anointing in here this morning. Isn't it something that the devil, that because of that nature, drove you to do the things you did, drove you to do, trying to satisfy that thirst. Then, when you come and get the Holy Ghost and get born again and get changed, that same devil comes in church. And then that devil tries to put condemnation up on you for doing what that nature that was in you drove you to do that he was a perverter of. But I heard a quote yesterday about blew me away. Brother said, but come on this morning to the fountain that's open in the house of David. He said, there is where we'll expel all the guilt and all the shame. My, is a musician to come today. This morning, church, what, 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 what kind of youth meeting could we have here this morning? What, what a youth meeting it would be this morning if we would say, Lord, I want to come drink out of that fountain. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this thirst driving me the things of the world. There is a place of satisfaction. You know, this morning there is, as we spoke about being a deceiving age, the prophet of God would sit this way. He would say, now, if the doctor telling you you got throat cancer, he said, from smoking cigarettes, trying to satisfy that thirst, won't scare you. He said, then the devil just lets you join church and get identified with what they call a better society. He said, then you'll come in church and just be a church member. Just be there, just being a church member. But young people, I don't know about you, but I think we got enough church members. We got enough quoters and enough arguers and debaters and fusters and fighters. And how many would say today, Lord, as a young person, I want to be a soldier. I want to be more than just a church member. I want to be the church. Could, could you witness that before the Lord this morning with your hand raised? If that's really your desire today, Lord, I, I want to move beyond just coming to church and going to Sunday school and singing in the choir and playing an instrument. Or, I, I, I want to move beyond just being a church member. I want to move into a place of satisfaction, a place in the presence of God. Brother Ramon said this way, it said, the greatest pleasure I know of is to be able to pray until I know that I'm in the presence of God and recognize it. He said, and then recognize that the God that made the promise is in our midst to fulfill the promise that he made. Brother Andrew, I don't know if God intends for me to have the Holy Ghost. Well, can I tell you God does? Well, Brother Andrew, I'm praying if it's God's will or not for me to have the Holy Ghost. Brother Andrew said, read the Bible. His word is his will. Can I, can I say it this way? There's some things you just ain't got to pray about. Well, Brother Andrew, I'm praying about getting the Holy Ghost. You ain't got to pray about that. It's right here. In, I'm trying to see if it's God's will or not. No, it's right here in the Word. Receive the Holy Ghost. And ye shall have power. How many wants that power this morning? Let's just bow our hearts together today. With every head bowed, today every eye closed. As we come to the close of this service this morning, I wonder if there would be one here today that you could witness I needed this from the Lord this morning God bless you God bless you Brother Andrew I've been raised in the message I've been raised in church I've been in church all my life and my mom and daddy's in church and family's in church maybe your dad's the pastor deacon something like that but there's still a thirst in your soul. God bless you, sis. God bless you, brother, back there. God bless you, sis. God bless you. God bless you there. 
Lord, I need you this morning to come in and satisfy my heart, satisfy my life. Lord, I want to come to a place this morning where your word, where your word is my identification. Lord, I realize I'm not exempt from these spirits. I realize I'm not exempt from the spirits of the world that try to pound at the people's minds, depressions and complexes and fears. I realize I'm not exempt from those, Lord. But I realize there's a satisfying portion in the Holy Ghost this morning. I realize there's a portion this morning I can have. There's a place I can go. Brother Andrew, as I hear the word, I just want to, I want to break free so bad, but all these things are piling up on my mind. All these debts and all these things I owe. All these, all these troubles and all these things are, they're wearing me out. Fear of the world, fear of this virus, fear of this, fear of school, fear of my job. Brother Andrew, I just can't get that freedom I need this morning. But have you heard the Jubilee trumpet today? Have you heard your day of grace? Have you recognized this is your day of grace? This is your hour, young lady, to go free from the fashions of Hollywood. Young man, this is your hour to go free from the passions and lust of this world. This is your hour. Would you receive it this morning? Heavenly Father, Lord, all across this building today, Lord, is young men and young ladies. Lord, young people, Father, that love you, that believe your word. Lord, as I have preached this morning, it felt cool. Lord, as they have listened to your word so reverently. And Lord, I pray something has been said this morning to bless them and help them. Lord, as I think of how your prophet said, Lord, they're in that Garden of Eden in such a place of innocence, in such a place of peace in such a place of rest how that Eve by disbelieving the word he said she swapped that veil of innocence for that lust veil he said before when she had that innocent veil she didn't know that she was naked Adam didn't know that he was naked but Lord when they swapped those veils they received knowledge and it put a lust veil upon them and your prophet would come in Satan's Eden and say now here we are in Laodicea in church age and one of, the, one of the characteristics of this age is it would be naked. They would be covered, their eyes, their, their, their lives would be covered by a lust veil. But oh God, here is a group of young people this morning. Lord, that is living right here in the middle of this evil age. Living right here in the middle of Satan's Eden. But Lord, they are not here desiring that lust veil. They are desiring that veil of innocence, Lord. I pray the Holy Ghost would come today, Father. Lord, I pray for every young man here, Lord, that stands before me today, dear God. Lord, that, are, that has got a future before him, got a life in front of him, Lord. Father, I pray this morning, if there would be one thing in their soul crying out for you, Lord. I pray that they would not leave this building today, dear God, without getting that satisfied. Lord, because that, that thirst is not going to be, it's, it, it, it might quieten down for a little bit, but Lord, it won't quieten for all. Lord, that, that, that thing will begin to cry out again. It'll begin to scream out again, Lord. And Father, as your prophet opened that message and said, dissatisfied people run into drugstores and buying pills to commit suicide and run into the bridges and jumping off. Because, but, oh, uh, terrible things, Lord, because of dissatisfaction in the land. Father, as message believers, we ought to be the most satisfied people. We ought to be the most happiest people, Lord. I pray for every young man here today, dear God. Lord, as they come to crossroads, as they come to places in their life and in their journey, Lord, and they don't know where to turn, they don't know where to go, I pray, O Lamb of God, that you would come to them today, Lord. I pray that they would surrender to you. I pray they would come up to you today, Lord, and lay their hands upon your head as it was. They would identify themselves with you, dear God, that that, that, that sin nature, that, that, that nature they're carrying can be transferred from them onto you, Lord, and that innocence could be transferred from you onto them. 
Oh, Father, I pray for every young lady here today, dear God. Lord, I pray you would fill a hedge of protection around her life. Lord, as the world is so pulling and as the world is this identity crisis, Lord, where, where women scream they can do what men does and men scream they can do what women does. And there's no separation no more. There, there, there's no more identification no more. It's just an age of chaos. It's an age of confusion. But, oh, God, I pray today, Lord, you would take my sisters here. You would take them, Lord, into your arms this morning, dear God. And, Lord, you would, you would reveal to them who they are. You would reveal to them the purpose you brought them upon this earth for. You would reveal to them that they're here, not just to be here. It's just to, just girls to take up space and to, to fulfill this. Oh, no, they are here to be daughters. They're here to be walking billboards. They're here to be advertisements, not of a historical God, but of a living present tense reality God. Come today, dear God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Minister to your children, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you love him today, friends? Do you really love him today? Do you want to know him as the God of reality? Do you really want to know him as the God of reality? I think of how Brother Brown would say it this way. He would say, Abraham set out with a desire to find a city whose builder and maker was God. He said, Abraham left everything he had seeking that city. He said, Abraham never found that city. He said, but the very place Abraham met Melchizedek, you familiar with that, Hebrews 7, Genesis 14, the very place Abraham met Melchizedek is the place that city will be. He said, see, showing if there is a desire in your heart, there is a God to show you the reality of that desire. My. Young people, there is a reality to serving God. There is a reality to living for Him. You want that reality today? Do you really want it? Would you just raise your hands and say, Lord, give me that reality this morning. Reveal to me the reality of who you are. If anyone needs prayer today, come, we'll pray for you. Let's just sing it together. By the way. Amen. Let's sing the hymn. Worship. Today's July the 4th. Today's Independence Day. Today's a day for you to lay down everything that you brought in here. You've heard the sound of the trumpet. Let this be your day. If you have a need, please come forward. We still believe in praying for the sick. We still believe in anointing with oil. Our brother, pray for you right here. Just sing to him.
an independence day but you need to have one for yourself this country is celebrating today with fireworks and many festivals but what a greater place to be I saw some fireworks today that is eternal these fireworks just keep going on and on saying, God, I'm tired. I don't want to be bound. I want to have today my independence. There was a man 2,000 years ago. He raised his hands up and he said, I declare to you today, this is your independence day. But he's not dead. He's still alive. And he's here today to give you what you asked for. Amen? To praise him. Let's all lift our hands. Just worship for a few minutes. Hold on the You know that that old that lamb died, and as Brother Andrew said, you just kept on sinning. There wasn't anything to take it away. But God didn't require a lamb to take away sin. He required a man. Because that blood couldn't do anything of that natural lamb to cleanse you. But God himself came down here. The Lamb of God. Amen. to take away the sin of the world. Amen. And a man died for you. God died for you. Amen. Amen? Amen? So why don't we give it back to him? Amen. Give your life today back to him. Amen. We've, had a, we've had a great time in the past couple of months. We've had a lot of our youth, Brother Zach and, and Sister Nyla and different ones that have given their heart to the Lord and received the Holy Ghost, been baptized. Sister here and sister here, we've been wonderfully blessed with baptizing. The Bible tells them to repent first, though. Yes. you got to repent. Amen. We forget that. Amen. We just want to get them to the water and get them back. Mm -mm. No, that's just going down, don't going down and coming back up a wet center. But if you'll repent, oh, yes. if you'll repent, yes. truly repent, yes. then God is obligated. Yes. If you'll go to the water, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. There's your promise. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And it's a gift that he wants to give to you. What an independence. What a time. Here it is, July 4th. And, and we're in our 49th year as a church. And we've got all these brothers. How many of you are from Jacksonville? Let's, let's see the Jacksonville church. Raise your hand. Up high. We Give them a hand clap of praise. Now, how many of you are from Beaufort? Uh, raise your hand. Higher. Higher. Okay. Let's give them a good hand. How many from Brother Martin's church back there? How many we got the row there? Brother Martin, he's not a... He's, a, hey, he's just one of us. He's, he's not new. He's been here before. But God bless you. Thank you all for coming. Listen. Listen. Keep this going on. We need young people to serve the Lord. Young men, stay pure. 
Young sisters, stay pure. Amen, because we need deacons, elders, if this thing keeps going on, man. We need you. God needs you. Amen. And he wants you to serve him. So as we celebrate this Independence Day, you just realize when you walk out that door, that if you're born again, you are the freest person to ever live on the face of this earth. Think about that. The freest person. So don't walk out of here bound. You can be free. Amen. God bless you. We want to, we want to pray over the food. Please, visitors first. So if you're a visitor, you go and get your food. The sisters will have, show you where to go and, and just eat to your heart's desire. Amen. And then the rest of us will eat afterwards. And then fellowship, as long as you want to. We're here all day. We have nothing else special except you. Amen. Get to know somebody different. Get to know a friend. Amen. Tell the world. That Jesus Christ is alive. And he's alive in you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for everything. Um, how many of you are going to be back tomorrow? Raise your hand. Oh, hold the hand up. Be back tomorrow. Mañana. Okay. All right, good. We just wanted to know kind of how many people are going to be here. I know you're going to be here tomorrow. You go to church here. Why is Wise guys in every crowd. And it's Aaron's boy. It's Aaron's boy. What do you think? Let's give our pastor. Oh, our preacher a good hand right there. And our pastor in the back, Brother Dale, let's give him a good hand for allowing us to have this service. And thank you all for coming. God bless you. Let's all minds clear. If you need anything, See Brother Bob, myself, Brother Luis, and there's some other brothers around that will help you downstairs. So God bless you. Have fun. And go with God. Take your light out into that world. And let it shine. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you give us. We thank you for the word that's went forth. Father, we know that it will never return void, but it will accomplish that which it was sent for. Father, as we know that the word is eternal, that maybe not today, but tomorrow, the next day, or two weeks from now, it'll still be doing what it said it would do. Change lives. Save souls. Heal the sick. And raise the dead. Thank you, Father, we pray that you'd be with us now as we go downstairs to eat a natural meal. Thank you again for the spiritual f food that we got today. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that tomorrow that will continue, Lord, in our regular service. Yes. We ask you, Lord, that you'd sanctify the food that's down there. That it will, Lord, it'll will take it in our bodies. And, Lord, it'll make us strong and healthy. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, and the things that we do wrong towards you, Lord. But you said that you have, you're an advocate, yes. you're a high priest, and as our brother said, that will eradicate our sin. Oh, yes. Lord, we thank you for that. Yes. The world knows nothing of this that we know, but we sure wish they do. Lord, we pray that you'd be with us, be with the ones that maybe have to travel back home today, that you'll keep them safe, Lord, and that you'll be with us as we go on our separate ways, Lord. Until we meet again. Father, give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. Visitors go first. Line up downstairs. Soon when morning we shall see Jesus in the air.